So the other day I was at a friend of mine's shop and uh, he showed me his dad's Model A pickup and told me it was for sale. So I looked it over, thought it was a pretty cool little truck and I thought, yeah, I'll buy it. He had told me that it hadn't run in probably eight or more years. So I figured I needed to pull the battery out, replace the battery, pull the plugs, turn the motor over before I started it. I went to pull the battery out, but I couldn't get the battery out unless I dropped the exhaust. And as I was looking at the exhaust, I knew that, okay, I need to replace the exhaust. So I called Richard from Magnaflow. Richard's here, and we're gonna take a look at this and see what we can do to uh, make this a much nicer exhaust. So today I'm here to check out the 31 pickup that Chip showed me in his text and uh, I want to see what we can do with the whole project. It, it should be an exciting one because I haven't seen one of these back at Foos Design in quite some time. So Chip, pictures to reality. It looks like you've got a little bit more uh, <laughs> pulled out of this than I expected. Yeah, I sent you a picture of the truck when it was on the ground mm. as I got it in the air and I figured out a way to get the battery in and out easier if I leave the exhaust once we're done with it in there. But what I discovered is the motor was junk. Somebody had uh, done some damage to the motor and then just parked it. And I got to pull the motor completely out. But I wanted you to take a look at it, see what parts we're going to need so we can finish a nice exhaust once I get the motor back. Every trip I make down here, it's always fun for me in the sense that this is a car enthusiast dream to come out and see what the next cool thing is. Uh, every time Chip's out here working on a client car or on his own personal cars, there's something new and cool to take a look at, whether it's uh, a unique approach to something or his input on what it's, what's going on with a particular design, or just really finding out some piece of car culture that popped up here that he happened to get his hands on. Obviously, it looks like someone spent some time in uh, putting together a little hot rod here. I mean, it looks like a stroker motor. It's got a lot of work done to it. I see some nitrous yep. solenoids, so <laughs> someone had some fun. Um, what do you kind of expect to do with it so we can kind of figure out what you want to do from like a you know, performance standpoint, sizing of the tubing, what do you kind of want to do? Well, I think we can go with, you can see what was in it. Yeah. I think we can do something similar, but I want to make it a much nicer exhaust system. I mean, honestly, that's your typical two and a half inch crush bent, like someone went to a muffler shop and just had them build with what they had there. and. Uh, probably was sufficient, but we got a lot more we can do. Um, yeah. And especially from a noise standpoint, it's got some old glass packs in there. Yeah, and I want to uh, figure out whether we put an X pipe or an H pipe pack in it. Got it. It's basically going to be a sizing thing. So probably had some like block huggers. Yep. Um, and then Maybe one of them right here. <clears throat> got it. Yeah. So yeah, this is a pretty classic build. Um, I'll run these back on it, but I'd like to do a beautiful exhaust system coming from here out and then I'll recode everything when it's done. Got it. And it uh, looks like material wise, if we're, you know, you're not gonna run the nitrous stuff, it looks like we got two gas tanks to be, you know, at least yep. cognizant of. We wanna make sure we keep the heat away from that. So we'll pull it through here, we can exit here. And then whether we put some mufflers or, or a glass pack back in here. Really just depends on kind of what you want for the sound. I mean. Uh, when you go through the motor, you're going to determine, you know, what kind of compression ratio you're going to work with and kind of mm -hmm. what kind of horsepower. But if you just want like a nice rumble, uh, yeah. we can definitely do that. If you want more of that classic sound of a glass packer, we obviously have some new updated ones that we can do. Um, mainly because it's a convertible, we're, we're yeah, not too worried about no drone and noise. Noise isn't going to bother us. It can be loud. Don't have a lot of room to go over the axle. Were you thinking no. to kind of stay underneath in that traditional kind it's of? It's stayed underneath before. These actually ran on both sides about like this. Gotcha. Doesn't have a whole lot of up travel, so it's probably not like yeah. a speed bump clearance thing. Right. Yeah. Definitely can work it out. We got a lot of space to work with too, if you want to get creative and, and kind of keep it out of visual sight, we can definitely work with something there too. Yeah. But power wise, if you're looking at a small block Chevy, um, 350 horse, you know, in that neighborhood, uh, the dual two and a half is more than sufficient. Uh, we can definitely stick with that, just work with better routing. I think the biggest thing in here, and you're kind of looks like you're already cleaning up stuff. Uh, yeah. Getting the heat away from things that you can't have it around. Obviously, we have all the braking stuff on this side, and looks like mm -hmm. we got uh, filters for oil and the fuel tanks. And these are these are fuel filters. Interesting. Yeah. 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 The, the guy that built this is into drag boats, and it's all basically drag racing stuff, boat racing stuff. Yeah, pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever seen like a kind of rotor molded dual gas tank in one of these. Usually I'm working around those things right. back here. Yeah. I'm going to leave those where they're at and uh, basically just 
replace the motor or you know, get it rebuilt right and put a nicer exhaust system on it and then just enjoy it well sounds like a plan we just gotta i said work around a little bit of are you going to kind of clean up any of the uh like the fuel lines and stuff down that side yes. or yep. yeah we'll work out the spacing but i think we're good with like a two and a half and the biggest thing is going to be is kind of picking out what you want to do here uh, I know we got some of the like round six inch and seven inch stuff that looks kind of like some of those older kind of classic mufflers too. If we wanted to put something that was more tucked here. I, I think that would look better. And then not have the, yeah. the big glass pack hanging out the back and just have the yep. tube. And I'm even thinking if you wanted to go over yeah. the axle, there is some room here, uh, noting that we only have about four inches of travel. Uh, we might be able to get over the axle too if you wanted to get all the way out, but yeah, kind of just have to figure out what you want to do for the look. Well, I'm assuming it's going to be a a hot rod kit. Right. So once I have it here, I'll start adjusting what I'm going to yeah. run. But if I can get the components from you, then I'll I'll get creative with it. Well, it sounds like we got a starting point. Yeah. As typical of most builds that someone else passes through somebody else's hands, they had an era which they were built in, and this one definitely looks like something that was you know thought up and maybe designed in the 80s or 90s. And the parts that were on it are typical of what you would find at like an exhaust shop or a muffler shop. Uh, today we have a lot more technology and of course with our help we can definitely modernize the components and bring it in one to the stainless steel era so we're going to take the mild steel products that were crush bent uh, to something that's going to be mandrel bent so optimal flow and what we're going to do here is spend a little bit more time to optimizing the exhaust getting the sound we want and of course getting the most we can out of that motor. And honestly if you're going to keep the power levels fairly low and you're talking only like 300 I mean mm -hmm. two and a quarter uh, is something that we can even consider because the dual two and a half with our mufflers and straight through, you know, you're looking at supporting up to 500 to the crank. Yeah, and it, we're not going to have that. Mm -mm. So if we, and this looks like two and a quarter, I, I don't know if you have something to measure that we can. If we stayed that diameter all the way through. Yeah, it would work. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at this too, they went two and a half and stepped it down. And then stepped it down, yeah. That's two and a quarter. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can get away with two and And this quarter. was the step too, because they went two and a half and then they reduced it back down. Yeah. And even with the crushes on two and a quarter. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that was our only scraping point was right at the front. We finished with two and a quarter also. Yeah. But yeah, I think we could do the whole thing two and a quarter. That would save us some space everywhere. Now we just got to figure out what you want to finish it with. Um, did you want to put like a like a pencil tip or what, what you wanted to do or raw pipe maybe or what was the kind of look you were going for? I'd do a pencil tip. Okay something real clean old school doesn't need to be modern yeah it's definitely got a classic look it's you want traditional to yeah well it looks like I got a parts list um, I'll definitely get started and I'll come up with a couple different options for the mufflers and see what okay. looks the best we'll get a couple mock-ups down here for you so now that we got the basic layout done and chips kind of giving me an idea of what goes on I've got to take all that information back to my design team and get all the parts assembled. And we're gonna try out a couple different things with the muffler. And I think we'll bring those back and see how they fit and uh, how Chip wanted to mount them in a different location and work on really what the final fitting is gonna be before we actually start bending out parts and bringing all the components in for the final finish and fitment portion of that. One of the cylinders had bent some valves and there was some water that got into that cylinder. And so now, something that I thought was gonna be a real simple little project, turning into a rebuilt motor. So I gotta get the motor out, get the heads and the motor and everything over to Wayne's Engine Rebuilding in Riverside. Mark Godfrey gave me a price to rebuild it and get everything done so I can get it back in the truck and start enjoying it. this truck was built, somebody went through a whole lot of effort to make everything really nice in the day that it was done. But today, when you look at it, it's very dated. All this braided hosing and all the lines that are in it, and it had nitrous. I'm gonna pull the nitrous out and just clean it up and try to simplify it and make it you know, a today's vehicle. Now, the wheels work with what the truck is now, 
but being that I have a company called Foose Wheels, I'm gonna make a one-off set of wheels for it and do something else. Uh, I'll probably change the headlights to the larger, almost stock looking headlight, or maybe I'll use a, uh, a 32, an original 32 headlight on the, on the truck, but get rid of the little lights and uh, just do a few things to it. But basically, the body on this truck is all stock. It's got the rubber running boards. It's got a, a kind of a real greenish gray leather interior. Nothing really needs to be done. I just want to make it my own. Big question, why did you buy it? Well, I've always loved the Roadster pickups. My favorite are the 28 and 29. This is a 31. The biggest difference is the doors and, and the body itself. But this was a real nice build. And you know, it's a shame that today you can't get a lot of money for a hot rod that is older. So I took advantage of what I could get. And uh, like I say, it's a nice little truck, but it's not mine yet. I need to do the things I want to do to it to make it mine. Then I'll enjoy it for a while and pass it on to somebody else to make it their own. <laughs>